Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Florida, a master's degree in education from Armstrong Atlantic State University, and a doctorate in education from Georgia Southern University. I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist, a member of both the American Board of Hypnotherapy and the National Guild of Hypnotists, and I'm president of the American Alliance of Hypnotists. I'm the director of the Steve G. Jones School of Clinical Hypnotherapy. I also serve on the board of directors of the American Lung Association in Los Angeles. I have over two decades of experience in hypnotherapy, and I still maintain a busy practice and teaching schedule because I see clients and teach classes worldwide. My client base consists mainly of people who want to lose weight, stop smoking, or gain confidence. Other clients include sales teams interested in boosting motivation and increasing income. Also, singles looking for love, insomniacs desiring proper sleep, and actors desiring more confidence for their next audition. When I travel to see clients and teach hypnotherapy certification classes around the world, I visit such places as Tokyo, Japan, Barcelona, Spain, Paris, France, London, England, Montreal, Canada, Los Angeles, California, and New York, just to name a few. By the way, since you have an interest in hypnosis, perhaps you'd be interested in becoming a certified clinical hypnotherapist. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com, and click on Hypnosis Classes at the top. You can either train in person or online. After your training, you'll be added to our worldwide directory of certified clinical hypnotherapists, and you'll receive a certificate. I was fortunate for many years to have my office in Beverly Hills, California, where I worked with such wonderful people as Tom Mankiewicz, the writer of Superman, Geraldine Saunders, the writer of The Love Boat, and many other celebrities. I have been interviewed on CNN, Fox News, and appeared on True TV, in addition to having my own hypnosis TV show. With my over 20 years of experience, I'm happy to share with you techniques that I've both developed and learned which can help you improve your life. I encourage you to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. There you will find my life's work, 22 books on hypnotherapy, over 3,000 hypnosis recordings available as downloadable MP3s or CDs, and these recordings will program your mind to achieve goals in such areas as weight loss, motivation, and stopping smoking. I also have audiobooks, such as this one, where I'm talking with you and sharing with you in a very dynamic way techniques that you can use to improve your life and the way you do things. The reason I'm telling you all of this is not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I, your teacher, am very capable and I know what I'm talking about. I'm also very happy for the opportunity to share this information with you, so rest assured that you're in good hands and let's have some fun as we now expand your knowledge. I wish you well in all of your endeavors and please be sure to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I'm going to be your tour guide, your mentor, as we learn about mastering peak performance. We all want to be our best. So whether you are involved in a mental or physical challenge, you want to come out ahead. It's difficult to stay motivated, however, once your endurance is tested. But you can count on being much more successful in your endeavor if you prepare yourself for the road ahead. It's important to remember that every challenge has both a mental and physical component. And the key to controlling the outcome is controlling both your mental and physical stress levels. We may assume that someone's peak mental and physical performance would happen at an early age, but nothing could be further from the truth. It is possible to be at the top of your game at any age, as long as you continue to push yourself to be better and take the best possible care of your mind and body. If you maintain your focus, then you will get better with age instead of taking for granted the seemingly endless supply of youthful energy. Let's talk about reaching your full potential. Remember to always do your best. Think positive. Some people look at challenges as being discouraging or negative. I want to tell you that a challenge is an opportunity to step up to the plate and to show just how well you can do. And this is when positive thinking is most crucial in order to power through until you reach success. Learn as much as you can about your challenge in order to reach the state where you're operating in the zone, 
You must do everything you can to master your skills. Mastering your skills gives you the confidence that you'll draw upon later in the challenge. Push yourself consistently. Train yourself to get maximum results. In physical activities, don't forget the importance of strength training. This is your preparation for maintaining the energy level you need to sustain your highest level of performance. Challenge yourself to stay in top shape. Use quick bursts of energy. When you're physically training, continue to work out at a steady pace for 90% of your workout. I think it's important here to point out that you should always consult your physician before beginning any training program or before making any changes in a training program. Rather than just doing what I say, take what I say and share it with your doctor. Then, if your doctor approves, go ahead and make those changes or start that program after consulting with your doctor. So challenge yourself to stay in shape. Use quick bursts of energy. When you're physically training, continue to work out at a steady pace for 90% of your workout. The other 10% should be high-intensity bursts of working out. The quick bursts of energy are the key to pushing you to the next level. The peak level of your performance, when you're working the hardest, pushes your development. Once you reach your highest level, you're ready to continue with an even higher challenge. But you cannot skip this step. The quick bursts of high-intensity training are a catalyst for productivity. The adrenaline high that you'll experience will empower you to work even harder. Let's talk about the power of stress. Now, stress is very powerful and it can take a toll on your performance. You must learn to build resilience against the negative toll that stress can take on your physical and mental health. Many athletes develop a very sensitive stress detection system. They take notice of all the subtle physical and mental changes they experience when they encounter a stressful situation. Once you notice these changes in your own system, then you can gain control when you feel these warning signs in your own body and mind. Once you are familiar with the symptoms of stress, you can plan your performance around when you know your stress level will peak. Let's talk about bad stress and good stress. Stress is taking a negative toll on your system when you start to feel hyperactive and not simply energized. While some stress can often help you prioritize and concentrate, bad stress prevents you from focusing on anything productive. Bad stress creates mental confusion, while good stress creates mental clarity. Good stress is a combination of adrenaline and preparation. Good stress is motivating, and it has no negative side effects. Let's talk about peak mental performance. Train your mind just as you would train your body. Train your mind to be quiet. Your mind operates best when it is in the state of minimal self-interference. Don't get caught up in all the possibilities of what can go wrong. Simply focus on your confidence and what you know you can master. Proper training for any event calls for both mental and physical exercise. Think of the process as both an internal and external rehearsal. For a physical challenge, prepare yourself mentally by imagining that you are watching yourself as an observer. From a distant observer's perspective, you can watch yourself execute every challenge perfectly. This will calm your mind and make you look forward to the event. For a mental challenge, try to imagine that you are observing everything from the perspective of the actor. You will be in the mindset of a winner. So for physical performance, I want you to start taking good care of your body. Insist on good nutrition. Vitamin C and E have been proven to help you reach your best levels of both physical and mental performance. Beta carotene is also essential to excellent health. A diet with complex carbohydrates will ensure that your energy levels remain consistent and that you won't experience a crash in blood sugar and energy levels. Whey protein is a key to great health. This type of protein is best for building muscle tissue. Whey protein is the first source of nutrients that the body uses during longer periods of exercise, so you can continue to exercise for longer periods of time. Adequate sleep is also an important part of a healthy lifestyle. Adequate sleep has been shown to improve mental and physical performance. Sleep is directly related to coordination. If you miss out on enough rest, your coordination skills will suffer. It's also important to stay hydrated. Drink at least 4 to 8 ounces of water every 15 minutes of exercise. Weigh yourself after every workout and drink an additional 16 ounces of water for every pound of water weight that you lose. If your weight goes down noticeably from one day to the next, it means you're dehydrated. Monitor your progress. Learn to control your breathing if you notice that your heart rate is changing during your workout routine. Keep a training log to monitor your progress in your heart rate, endurance, and progress in strength training. 
So I mentioned that you can have peak performance at any age. Let's look at that in more detail. Younger people have more energy, but older people have the experience and concentration that is necessary to long-term success. It is a myth that you are in the best shape of your life when you're young. You can be any age and reach your peak performance. In general, people peak in productivity around the age of 30 to 45. But workers who are older than this age range consistently outperform workers who are younger than this age range. Older people sometimes experience prejudice because it is a common misperception that older people are more resistant to change than their younger counterparts. Older people do need more training, but they're no different from younger people when it comes to things such as their ability to perform their jobs. So make your environment as conductive to productivity and performance as possible. Provide diffused lighting, which is less harsh than glaring overhead lights. Doing so makes a huge improvement on your ability to concentrate. Reduce glare by providing matte surfaces on everything possible. This can be much easier on the eyes for an older person. Lower sound frequencies. Minimize distractions and noise in order to allow you to focus more intently on the task at hand. People over 35 should reevaluate their physical workouts in order to remain energetic on a consistent level. Older athletes and people in the workplace should be efficient in their energy output and conserve energy whenever possible. This will ensure maximum potential when it's time to perform. By the way, it's important to exercise consistently and avoid sudden physical bursts, which can eventually leave anyone feeling drained. No matter what the challenge before you, your peak performance is as much a mental as a physical endeavor. However, if you are armed with the right preparation and a positive frame of mind, there is no challenge too big and no obstacle that can stand in your way. All right, you've got a lot of information in your mind now, a lot of information that's come to you, a lot of information you've heard from me. There's a lot going on in your mind. Why don't we take a moment now, make sure you're not driving during this. If you're driving, don't listen to this part. Do this part later. But if you're not driving, what I want you to do is close your eyes and let all those thoughts come to you, all those thoughts that are floating around in your head. Let them come to you now. And I want you to start seeing them become organized. And I want you to start seeing them happening in your life. I want you to see them playing themselves out in your life somehow. All these ideas you have, I want you to find a place for them in your mind. Whether in terms of a plan, or in terms of changing something about yourself immediately, or in terms of, it could even be a vacation you're thinking of taking. But those ideas that are coming to you now, as a result of listening to this material, what I want you to do with them right now, I don't want you to write anything right now. I don't want you to overthink anything. I just want you to close your eyes as long as you're not driving. I want you to close your eyes. And as I'm silent, just use your imagination and let your imagination run wild. See where these ideas will take you. Let these ideas float around in your mind as I'm silent and really let them play out. Just let them go wild in your mind. See where they take you. As I'm silent, do this now.
right? Did you enjoy that? Now, probably what happened is initially when you closed your eyes, you thought of a bunch of random thoughts and they didn't make any sense. Maybe some things were coming in that really didn't fit there. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I see all kinds of interesting images that don't have anything to do with what I'm talking about or listening to. But hopefully, after a little while, those images kind of settled down and meaningful images started to show up. Like, aha, that business idea I had, or that vacation I had, or that person I need to tell something to, or something started to develop, or maybe a series of things. When you let your imagination run wild, you often come up with ideas that you will not access if you're beating your head against the wall, if you're trying, trying, trying to figure something out. That's not as effective usually as just letting your mind run wild, because eventually your mind is going to settle down and is going to start giving you information that you can actually use. So I hope you use this exercise not only in this program, but outside of it as well. So we're almost halfway through the program. I say almost halfway because you're at the end of module one and you're almost there because I want you to write down five more points, five more things that you got from the program that came to you during the second half of this module. We did this during the first half. Now I want you to do it for the second half. Five more points that came to you during the second half of this module. Go ahead and write them down now as I'm silent. Five things that either I said to you or that came to you while you listened. Good. Now I want you to take point number one and elaborate on it as I am silent. Good. Now take point number two and fill it in. Elaborate on it. Point number two, elaborate on the point that you wrote down and make it real for you. Go ahead and involve emotion and a plan if you want to. Elaborate on point number two as I'm silent. Good. Now I want you to elaborate on point number three. Take point number three, what you got from the second half of this module, and elaborate on it as I'm silent. Good. Now take point number four and elaborate on that as I'm silent. All right, now take point number five 
and elaborate on point number five while I'm silent. Good, so now you have five points from halfway through the module, five points from the other half of the module, and you're only halfway through the program. You have 10 things with elaboration that you can use once you're done with this program. All right, let's get back to it. We all want to be our best. So whether you are involved in a mental or physical challenge, you want to come out ahead. It's difficult to stay motivated, however, once your endurance is tested. But you can count on being much more successful in your endeavor if you prepare yourself for the road ahead. It's important to remember that every challenge has both a mental and physical component. And the key to controlling the outcome is controlling both your mental and physical stress levels. We may assume that someone's peak mental and physical performance would happen at an early age, but nothing could be further from the truth. It is possible to be at the top of your game at any age, as long as you continue to push yourself to be better and take the best possible care of your mind and body. If you maintain your focus, then you will get better with age, instead of taking for granted the seemingly endless supply of youthful energy. Let's talk about reaching your full potential. Remember to always do your best. Think positive. Some people look at challenges as being discouraging or negative. I want to tell you that a challenge is an opportunity to step up to the plate and to show just how well you can do. And this is when positive thinking is most crucial in order to power through until you reach success. Learn as much as you can about your challenge. In order to reach the state where you're operating in the zone, you must do everything you can to master your skills. Mastering your skills gives you the confidence that you'll draw upon later in the challenge. Push yourself consistently. Train yourself to get maximum results. In physical activities, don't forget the importance of strength training. This is your preparation for maintaining the energy level you need to sustain your highest level of performance. Challenge yourself to stay in top shape. Use quick bursts of energy. When you're physically training, continue to work out at a steady pace for 90% of your workout. I think it's important here to point out that you should always consult your physician before beginning any training program or before making any changes in a training program. Rather than just doing what I say, take what I say and share it with your doctor. Then, if your doctor approves, go ahead and make those changes or start that program after consulting with your doctor. So challenge yourself to stay in shape. Use quick bursts of energy. When you're physically training, continue to work out at a steady pace for 90% of your workout. The other 10% should be high-intensity bursts of working out. The quick bursts of energy are the key to pushing you to the next level. The peak level of your performance, when you're working the hardest, pushes your development. Once you reach your highest level, you're ready to continue with an even higher challenge. But you cannot skip this step. The quick bursts of high-intensity training are a catalyst for productivity. The adrenaline high that you'll experience will empower you to work even harder. Let's talk about the power of stress. Now, stress is very powerful and it can take a toll on your performance. You must learn to build resilience against the negative toll that stress can take on your physical and mental health. Many athletes develop a very sensitive stress detection system. They take notice of all the subtle physical and mental changes they experience when they encounter a stressful situation. Once you notice these changes in your own system, then you can gain control when you feel these warning signs in your own body and mind. Once you are familiar with the symptoms of stress, you can plan your performance around when you know your stress level will peak. So now you have something that you can take with you after this program. You have those five points that you elaborated on, and you can use them after this program's over. So let's continue on with the information now.